Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to six things that we learned from Accrington Stanley Nil at Bradford City 3. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try to 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your thoughts on our six talking points that we do go on to discuss in today's video i am delighted to be joined by corbin once more i'm going to start out then with box number one it is a green box for andy cook when andy cook players like that. He is one of the best players in the entire division. He was absolutely exceptional today. On Tuesday, he didn't really offer much. I thought the service into him was actually quite poor and on the whole, didn't really do much up against Richard Wood. And in this one, it was a completely different performance. He bullied every single one of the Macrington defenders from start to finish. He has a big part to play in all three goals. It's the assist he gets for the first goal. I don't think he'll actually get credited with the assist for the second goal, even though he has a massive part to play in it. But the assist for that first goal, I mean, Tomkinson kind of, I wouldn't say it's an aimless ball, but it's more of a hooked ball towards Cook and hope for the best. And Cook certainly provided the best. It was an absolutely excellent first touch to get it out of his feet and a brilliant ball through to Tyreek Wright who manages to finish it into the back of the net for his first goal since returning it to the football club. The second goal as well, Richards with a nice long throw, Cook pins his man and kind of Cook jumps and it also makes the defender kind of and they both jump over the ball. It was really weird and Wright managed to get away from his mark and again finished brilliantly in the third goal. That is a sort of finish we've not really seen from Andy Cook. Usually when he gets in those positions, we saw it's a very similar chance to the one he had away at Stockport earlier on this season where he has a lot of time. He normally overthinks it and ends up either getting the ball stuck under his feet or he trips over the ball. You know, normally in them sort of positions, Andy Cook doesn't really fly. That's not his bread and butter. You know, if he gets a chance inside the penalty area, he gets a header in the box, he's probably going to score it. But them sort of chances where he's one-on-one, -on -one, he's got a lot of time to think about it. He normally doesn't deliver, but this finish against Accrington was outstanding. That's the sort of finish you'd expect from someone like a Tyler Smith, who's a little bit more composed with the finishing rather than being a physical sort of striker. It's an exceptional finish. He opens up his body and wraps it into the bottom corner, but it wasn't just that. The amount of times, in the, especially in the first half, but in the second half as well, where we were kind of just wrapping balls into him and first time he was just flicking it into a door right cavernor there's number of times he was doing that it was an absolute joy to watch he was exceptional yesterday and you've got to give cook a lot of credit because again there's still a certain section of our fan base who for some reason think that because cook's got his three-year contract that he is all of our problems and he gets scapegoated quite a lot and I never really understand it. Yes, he has had bad performances this season and yes, he has missed chances which have cost us but when he plays like how he did today, uh, yesterday, sorry, we are actually recording this on the Saturday so if I do say today then apologies but Cook was exceptional and thoroughly deserves a green box. Like I say, when he plays like that, he's one of the best, if not the best players in the league. Stupid thing is there's still people coming out of the game saying that he's, he's still not very good. If Andy Cook did play like that, it, we wouldn't have won that game because you were integral to holding the ball up. He bullied their centre backs. Yeah, they're naive because they're young. But you know when he's on that form, like you say, any centre back in this division don't stand a chance up against him. He's finished, like you say, there with the composure, the sort of uh, hooked it around the keeper, and uh, he, he was selfless. His work rate, it, it was a bit like um, how Harry Kane plays in in some ways. I mean, absolutely nowhere comparing him, but you know how he how he drops into the midfield and links play and allows your rights and your draws to run in the channels a bit more and uh yeah it, it were well worth his money today because if if if, if he can keep playing like that, that that's that's incredible because it allowed uh the decoy ones from from the other three and uh yeah it, it was agile as well you know you don't normally see andy cook be agile in, in the final third and quite light on his feet uh which, which is fantastic to see and uh but one, one thing i actually saw uh, heard someone say uh in the week was uh if andy cook played in the 90s um he'd be a premier league player what what, what do you think about that because you, you could argue that you know the football was, was slower and you didn't have to be as fitter um but then you could argue it you know would it be twice the size in mcdonald's at, at, at half time well, I mean, it's very hard to say as someone who's watched very, very limited football from the 90s. Maybe the Premier League might be a little bit of a step too far. But if he plays how he does, how like he played today, then 
you know, there's no one that can stop him. It, it, you know, I feel like you're looking at the championship, even some of their defences would struggle to stop him because a lot of them, especially higher up, they're not really physical defenders. And Cook used his physicality to his advantage. And yeah, like like you say, I thought it was excellent. Would he make it in the Premier League in the 90s, though? I think I'd have to let that one be debated down in the comment section down below. Yeah, no, let, let us know because it's certainly an interesting one. I think I've probably got a bit too ahead of myself on a Saturday night after watching a masterclass from Sir Andrew Cook. Yeah, Sir Andrew Ellis Cook indeed. Right, we'll move on then to box number two. It's another green box, this time at Fort Richie Smallwood. We massively missed him over the last two games, especially on Tuesday night. And I hope now people start to realise what me and a few other people have been banging on about now, Smallwood is so pivotal to our success and he's so key for us. Before we signed Small, we banged on for years about having someone in the midfield who's not scared to put a tackle in. We had it a little bit with Jan Songo, but he obviously has not quite got the football and IQ that Richie Smallwood has. And I thought he led on that pitch like a true captain, even just every now and again, trying to play the quick free kicks, which is not really something we do. Normally, we'd wait to load it up and let a centre-half launch up the pitch. But he was really trying that with his you know, intelligent football and IQ. And I'm not saying taking a quick free kick makes you a championship standard player. But a lot of the time, our players wouldn't really look to do that. And Smallwood was trying to do it. The amount of times he broke up play. Gilead as well. We're going to talk about him later on in today's video. I thought the pair of them were excellent. And don't get me wrong, McDonald offers something a little bit different in that midfield. But if I had to have either Smallwood or McDonald, I'd go Smallwood every day of the week because because we finally got a midfielder who puts tackles in, who leads from the front. And I thought his set pieces weren't too bad today. A lot of them were in decent areas. Same with at Clark Adore. Smallwood obviously gets a lot of criticism because his set pieces sometimes aren't particularly great. But in terms of his infield play, I feel like he's absolutely brilliant. You know, he's pivotal to us and we massively missed him on Tuesday night there was no leadership in there we've not got many midfielders who want to head the ball put tackles in Smallwood is certainly that man and you know Graham Alexander is a big big fan of Richie Smallwood and me personally I am as well and yeah deserves a green box for his performance yesterday I thought it was absolutely brilliant we definitely missed his intensity in the last couple of games in midfield I, I think McDonald's a bit more of a luxury player someone who is very good on the ball but he doesn't have that defensive solidity that, that Smallwood brings and his intensity is something that we definitely missed in, in that midfield. And we, we had the legs to outrun a very young, youthful and fit Accrington side. And um, yeah, it, it, it was fantastic. You know, he controlled the game. In terms of his urgency in like free kicks and, and that sort of situation where he's, um, he wants to play quicker and forward, uh, a lot more that comes from you know an instruction from from Alexander for me because it's something we've seen in, in his play but um is is more aggressive you know we, we want to be more on the front foot compared to a more sideways and backwards Mark Hughes domain. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I feel like as a holding midfielder, it's hard to really stand out. But you massively notice when Smallwood isn't in that side. And it took forever to get over that two-game ban, but now it's done and hopefully gets no more suspensions because, like I say, he's very, very massive for us. But we'll move on then to box number three. It's another green box, this time for Jonathan Tomkinson. I felt personally he had a really, really good game at centre-half. Again, we had another different back three with obviously Sam Stubbs dropping out with that concussion protocol Ash Taylor's got a calf injury. Matty Platt still out with that hamstring injury. So it meant we had Tomkinson on the right, which is you know where he has been playing. But he had Kelly next to him in the middle and Rydalg as the left side, which I actually don't mind that, to be fair. I thought all three of them were pretty decent. I thought Kelly had a really good game. We're not going to speak about him in today's video, but I thought he was excellent there. Tomkinson just gets the box over Kelly because the amount of times where Accrington looked like they had a little bit of a dangerous opportunity and Tomkinson's recovery pace was outstanding. I remember inside the first five or ten minutes, Tyreek Wright played a ball straight through to the Accrington striker and JT just came completely out of nowhere and swept you up. I think we ended up conceding the corner, but he did that on a few occasions where it looked like Accrington were going to cause a little bit of danger and Tomkinson just comes out of nowhere. I feel like for someone who's quite tall like what he is, I think he's a little bit taller than Critchlow. The, the pace that Tomkinson has is outstanding. One of the fastest centre-halves I've seen to be honest with you, you know, when you look at the some of the centre halves that we've had at the football club over the last couple of years, JT is absolutely rapid and he brings something to this side that no one else really has. You look at building for next season. I think if we're in League One, we've got a good opportunity of bringing Tompkinson back in League Two. 
not really, but you look at the profile of centre half. Timmy Odessina is very similar, and obviously he's still got a year left with the Bantam, so maybe he might come in next season and take that role from Tomkinson. But I thought as a central defender, he won all of his battles, and there were at one point where he put a header in, he clearly got fouled after the ball, and one of the Accrington commentators was saying he felt embarrassed for Tomkinson going down like that. And it was like it was almost like he'd gone down like and then he didn't say what like. I thought the, the commentators were absolutely dreadful, but Tom Kinson was really, really good and deserves a green box. I feel like over the last couple of weeks, his performances have not dipped a little bit, but he lacked composure on the ball and he was kind of average, really, not really standing out. But today he stood out once more. He was excellent in that defence. It's another clean sheet for us as well. Sam Walker didn't really have much to do, maybe one or two saves and came for a couple of crosses. But apart from that, not really much to do. And you've got to give the defence credit for that. But especially Jonathan Tompkinson, I thought he had a brilliant game yesterday. Yeah, that definitely improved from, like you say, last few games where he has looked a bit more um, vulnerable to, to a mistake. And today, dominated. A lot came down his side uh, that they look quite nippy. And obviously, when you've got uh, your, your Idols and, and your Kellys, and, and no matter who he's playing with, they're much slower than him. And there's a lot of reliability on him to uh, use his recovery pace in, in the back line. And it's some, again, if, if anything happened to him, I think our form had immediately dipped because it is one of the players where you look at and you go, who's going to, who's the replacement for him? And he ain't one. Uh, who, who can do the same role that he does. So he's, he's massively important to the system and to the team. And that's why we've uh, seen a massive improvement into our defence and, and clean sheets since he's come into the back line and um, been dominant in the, and another professional performance from him. Yeah, and I think was it Swindon away this season where Tomkinson was randomly dropped down to the bench and you know we saw it in that game how terrible we were defensively. I think we had Stubbs on the right, Taylor in the middle and Kelly on the left, one of the slowest back threes you'll ever see and surprise, surprise, we got done in behind twice by balls in behind and I feel like that was actually the last league game we lost. I'm pretty sure that's right. And yeah, Tomkinson, once again, back to his best yesterday and was absolutely brilliant. So we'll move on then to box number four, the only yellow box of today's video. And it might be controversial, but it's for Tyreek Wright. Yes, he scored the brace, but I personally wasn't impressed. And those of you who watch the watch along live stream, I don't really feel like it was an opinion that that would be unpopular, to be honest with you. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comment section down below. But Tyreek Wright, yes, he scored a brace. He took both of the goals very nicely. The first one was a little bit of a harder finish. You know, the second one, if he doesn't score that, I think you are a little, a little bit disappointed. But apart from the two goals, I thought his overall play was actually really quite poor, if I'm honest with you. I mentioned it about Tomkinson. Inside the first 10 minutes, he played a back pass straight through to the Accrington strike. I don't really know what he was trying to do. Yes, it's a mistake and players are going to make mistakes. But if we have Ash Taylor at Center half, for example. I know we didn't, and it's hypothetical, but if we have Ash Taylor there, that's a, a goal for Accrington. They get an equaliser, their fans get up, and it, it's maybe not as comfortable as what it ended up being. Thankfully, we got away with it, and you know, great for him to score his first two goals for the club. He was much better today than what he was on Tuesday night, but I feel like on Tuesday night, it was absolutely shocking. Callum Kavanagh was also really poor on Tuesday. He came on today, and how he didn't score at least one or two, I'll never know, but yeah, there was a few moments in the game where, you know, Wright picked up the ball in dangerous areas and his first touch was off. Yes, he got caught offside a couple of times as well. He got booked for kicking the ball away as the referee blew the whistle. I thought it was really, really harsh from the referee. He was very busy and he was a really, really poor, again, official, in my opinion. There were very few decisions where I thought he got that right. I thought he did have a really, really poor game. But the fact Wright got booked for kicking the ball away whilst the referee is in process of blowing his whistle, I thought that was a really, really stupid decision, really, from the ref. But it might be unpopular. Yes, he scored a brace and yes, he's contributed massively to us winning the game. But on another day, you look at how he let us down a little bit in the build-up. Like, for me, personally, I thought Clark Adore had a much better game than Wright, and I don't think Adore got a goal contribution. And Tyreek Wright comes away from the game with two goals, and it just shows that goals and assists and them statistics don't mean everything in the game. Yes, it's what determines you winning football matches and, you know, wins your points and stuff like that. But I feel like Adore, personally, had an exceptional game compared to Tyreek Wright, where I thought, was, apart from that, if you take Wright's goals away, his performance in terms of, overall play it was actually quite poor and I know he scored the two goals and a lot of people were very happy about that but my personal opinion is I don't think he particularly had a great game and that's why I've gone with the yellow box for him. Yeah it's definitely a controversial one but it's a good interesting talking point because you know you do see um, you know footballers who start bad get, get loads of goals but don't necessarily reflect, reflect the performance and yeah right he didn't have the greatest of games and you know, he did make a few mistakes, um, but and he did follow on 
uh, from the last few games, you know, improving. And uh, maybe, I think that does come with a bit of lack of confidence for me, spell at Plymouth, you know, massively getting, um, you know, hounded out, get not really given a chance. So getting that back to rhythm, getting that rhythm back of playing football matches and getting back with a, a fan base that have, have warmed to him instantly, I think that's some of the, the um, it would always take time to get back to and the sharpness, of, of course. Um, but, you know, with, with the goals, you, you do see, I mean, actually, to take it away from Bradford City, unfortunately, um, but still into football, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did, did an interview, which was interesting because he was talking about how Ronaldo, um, obviously one of the best footballers of all time, possibly made his team worse, but that season he got like 20 goals. and But the team played worse. So you can get goals, but at the end of the day, it's how the team plays. And yeah, we got the three... 3 0 win, the team played well, but on another day, like you say, his poor performance, you know, a few mistakes in there, the back pass, if, if Tomkinson in there, it could have led to a defeat. But he got the goals, we won 3 0, and uh, ultimately, he was a match winner for us. Um, so, yeah, but hopefully, like I say, that confidence starts to build, he starts to settle into a team, the fan base um, get, get, get behind him, you know, with the goals, obviously. When he came off, that the chance were going round um, with, with, with a sort of. Uh, I don't think he had a chance last time, so it's good to see him get a chance going. So hopefully, that's lifted his morale and he can kick on now. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for him playing poorly for the rest of the season if he wants to score two goals every game. It sounds like his injury isn't too serious. I thought that was a bit of a weird one. He came out in the second half and before he'd even kicked off for the second half, he was limping over to his position. And I don't really know why anyone didn't flag that up on another day. That could have potentially being our final substitution opportunity and obviously it wasn't and it didn't cost us but you've got to think about these little things we saw it with Kelly a couple of weeks ago against Wickham it looked like it's some sort of contact injury on his foot so he should hopefully be fine for Tuesday I was surprised to actually see him in the starting 11 after Tuesday when you look at Adam Wilson not even in the match day squad I thought that was a bold move from Graham Alexander yes in the end it doesn't really matter but I do feel like that is really harsh on Wilson who came on off the bench on Tuesday for about half an hour and ran the Doncaster defence ragged and then suddenly he can't get into the squad unless it's an injury. That was a really, really baffling move. Even though we have won three now, I still feel like decisions like that is something that we do need to bring up. But we'll move on then to the penultimate box of today's video. We mentioned him earlier. It's a green box for Alex Gilead, partnered with Smallwood in that row. And I feel like you noticed Gilead a little bit more. Both of them were pressing high up the pitch, but Gilead was absolutely everywhere. He pretty much covered every blade of grass, whether it was pressing going forward, it was recovering defensively. That is the sort of Alex Gilead that we have come to expect this season where he's just absolutely everywhere. He had some nice quality on the ball as well, playing some really good progressive passes and uh, disappointing really that he's not ended up with a goal contribution because I feel like when you play so well and you come away from the game with no goal contributions at times, it can go a little bit under the radar. And if Gilead wants to play like that and go under the radar for the rest of the season, again, that's fine by me. I thought he was really, really good today. There's not really much else you can say about him. The amount of times he won the ball back in that midfield was brilliant. Him and Small both backing each other up. I do certainly think them two partner each other well. And I've seen a lot, you know, a lot of people over the last couple of months and maybe the last couple of ye years really saying that Gilead should be captain over Smallwood. But I feel like when they're both in there together, Smallwood and Gilead, whoever's got the armband, you know, I, I know this is something I said before and I got a little bit of criticism for that, but he's only a piece of material at the end of the day. If they're both going to lead in there, the more leaders you've got in your team, you know, the better for everybody else. And Gilead showed that leadership in abundance with not just his quality on the ball, his pressing ability, leading from the front. And there's not really too much else to say about him apart from the fact he was absolutely brilliant and deserves another green box because I thought he was brilliant. Yeah, like you said, uh, you, you lead by example on the pitch and Gilead does that. And don't it don't I don't think it does matter who the captain is. Yeah, you've got players who always look to the leader, um, whether that's when the heads are down or when the heads are up. And Small being back in, I think, did maybe raise the levels a bit by by the intensity of it being up because, uh, especially with Small, he's sort of a, a second manager on the pitch because whatever the manager tells him, he follows them instructions. Um, you know, whether Gilly had to do that or not, it, it's irrelevant. But um, yeah, obviously, he's been playing wing back more recently, went back into a midfield, you know, took it as, as though he's been playing there the last few games. Uh, good tenacity to win the ball back and yeah, just an overall complete midfield performance again from Alex Gilead. 
Yeah, like you said, there's not really too much you can say about him apart from runs around a lot, got good quality on the ball, wins his duels, leads from, by example, leads from the front and deserves to be praised for that. We'll move on then to our final box of today's video. Again, someone we mentioned earlier, it's another green box, this time for Clark Adore. I don't know what Alexander has done with him over the last five weeks, but he's completely transformed him in terms of his ability and actually showcasing why we've signed him and why we've given him a three-year deal. Now, Accrington's pitch certainly is isn't the biggest but the amount of times where he was in tight areas he had two or three players around him and he just wiggles out of it so easily or he'll do a nice little skill move and he'll play a beautiful pass down the line he did it on a few occasions and his link up play with Halliday he's just getting better and better I feel like them two are building up a really nice relationship down that right hand side again frustrating he's not come away from the game with a goal contribution because his performance certainly deserved that I thought he was absolutely excellent a man of the match contender in my opinion because <laughs> I feel like it's very easy for wingers to kind of go through the motions like what he was doing earlier on in the season, not really showing their quality or maybe doing it in a five, 10 minute spell, not doing anything for half an hour and again, have another five or 10 minute spell. But from minute one to 81 or whenever it was when he got substituted off the pitch, I thought he was absolutely excellent on there. And like I said, disappointing he's not come away from the game with a goal contribution, but I don't really feel like he had many opportunities to do so. His link up play with Cook is getting much better as well. I feel like the more that they play together, them two could really form a very good partnership because Adore is very good at beating players and he can lay the ball off to Andy Cook who did have another opportunity in the game quite early on. I think it was before he scored his goal where he was leaning back and he fired the ball over the band. I think that came from some link-up play between Richards, Adore and Wright, uh, if I'm right in saying. But Adore's creativity is outstanding. His link-up play with Halliday down that side is excellent and again, someone who deserves to be praised for just playing very well. Yeah, Cl Clark Odra, another fantastic performance from him. Like I say, getting better week in, week out, forming partnerships and some that we've actually talked about with a back line forming partnerships, you know, the, the back three always being consistent and, and reliable and not really taking out. It's not something you think of with the forward line, you know, linking up, getting partnerships, cooking and Odra. And, uh, but obviously in midweek, he play, had to play as a number eight, which didn't suit him for me. He still played well and still um, sh showed that he's got that quality in, in midfield. But uh, right on that right side, he, he shows his that he's got it in, in abundance, you know, taking players on in tight spaces, doing, uh, you know, more more skill moves coming out, but in, at the right time before I don't think it was ever the right time to be, you know, doing fake shots and spins all the time when, you know, you just need to get a shot off. Right now, he's, he's showing his confidence because he's playing well and he's deserving all the praise that he's getting. Um, like I say, more goals and assists would, would be nice because it, it would just uh, be the cherry on the top to... to go to show why he's playing so well uh, to back it up but you know you, you don't need to back it up when, you, when you're performing and you're a standout performer week in week out and probably uh, he's our most technical technically gifted player as well and maybe that's because he's the most confident player at the minute but he's definitely showing that you know he's, he's our technically get best player at, at this moment in time. Yeah I would definitely agree with that and you can see that there's a reason why he has played in the championship for Barnsley. You look at his first five months of a Bradford City player, he maybe had one, two decent performances, maybe away at Crawley on the opening day of the season. And that was about it, if I'm honest with you. Since then, his performances have just massively declined. And then we've hit February and they've gone from just slowly going down to suddenly they're all the way back up at the top again and he looks absolutely exceptional and it's great to see him proving why we've given him a three-year contract. You know, there's a few players who've been given long-term contracts recently. You look at Alex Patterson, picked up three long-term injuries this season. Tada Smith being very hit and miss. You know, one week he's hot, one week he's cold. Didn't really get much of a sniff today. And Adore is finally proving why we've given him a three-year deal. And there are lots of other positives to come out of the game. I thought Lewis Richards completing 90 minutes was a big positive and he looked really good. Liam Rydow playing slightly out of position potentially. I certainly think he suits left centre-back better than left wing-back. I thought he had a pretty steady away game there. I feel like Callum Kavanagh looked lively and again was maybe... I wouldn't say he was unlucky not to score because I feel like he just lacked the composure in front of goal. There was a couple of disappointments though for me. Actually, in terms of the positives, great to see Jamie Walker back. Obviously, he hasn't played since before Christmas. And I mean, he looked miles off it, but obviously great to see him back and hopefully he can build up his match sharpness over the next couple of weeks. Daniel Yagoke as well hasn't played for about five months and he was back in the squad today on the bench, which is good because he can cover anywhere across that back five, which is positive news for us. But like I mentioned earlier, the negatives. Why is Adam Wilson not in the squad? I feel like... Yes, we've got a lot of competition for places, but Adam Wilson on Tuesday proved that he should be on that bench at the absolute minimum. Callum Kavanagh was poor on Tuesday. Tariq Wright was poor on Tuesday, and they both got an opportunity today. And Tariq Wright's not even our player. There's probably some sort of 
obligation or clause in his contract where if Wright doesn't play or he's not in the squad then he's fit then we have to pay a little bit more money but I feel like Wilson did enough to deserve at least being on the bench I also don't understand how we had seven subs today but no homegrown player I don't know if it's because we've sold a certain amount of academy players that we don't need to do that but Bobby Poynton obviously wasn't on the bench today so I don't really know how that works out do, do you have any idea no no I'm, uh, I'm going through the squad but no I don't, yeah, I don't, it, I don't understand that. Yeah, it certainly seemed a little bit weird. I feel like I remember a couple of seasons ago seeing that we'd sold a certain amount of academy players, so it didn't matter. But I thought that would have only counted for that season. You know, I feel like that was one or two years ago now. But yeah, Poynton, I like Poynton. Do I look at the options off the bench and think he's better than some of the players on there? No, you know, look at Chapman getting the assist on Tuesday night. Walker is massive for us. You've also got Callum Kavanagh, who had been in decent form up until the last couple of matches and... Yeah, overall, obviously very positive. We come away from the game with a 3-0 win. Let me know your thoughts on Tariq Wright getting a yellow box down in the comment section down below. Yes, he scored the two goals. Was his performance any good? Let me know your thoughts on all that sort of stuff down below. But I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could join it, 80 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that would massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below let me know down below your thoughts and our six talking points from today's video thank you all for watching make sure to go check out corbin's channel as well the link to that is down in the description down below have a great rest of your day and i'll see you very soon for another video peace